Hello and welcome to today's session on school readiness with Harford County Public Schools. I am Kathy Griffin, the Early Childhood Coordinator. Now today you're going to see me move between two screens, so you might see me move my head to look at some information on the screen next to me. Give me a moment and I'm going to share my screen with you. Today, our objectives are to investigate or explore school readiness. What is school readiness and what does it mean for you? Explore Harford County Public Schools and the Early Childhood Program and Kindergarten Framework. The Kindergarten Framework is what the daily schedule looks like in kindergarten. Let's start with a warm up. I want you to think about what was your kindergarten experience like? Did you even go to kindergarten? How is it different from kindergarten today? Also think about what are your hopes for your child for kindergarten? What are your goals? What are your expectations? Also, what are your hopes and expectations for the actual kindergarten program itself? Next, I have a wonderful video that illustrates the importance of early childhood education. I'm going to stop sharing my screen in order to pull up the video. Okay, here we go. Your child's future is worth investing in and early childhood matters. I love that the descriptions and the video and all of the information that it provides to give everyone a clear picture from birth all the way to prepare children for career and college readiness and to be problem solvers and to support their learning. I'm going to share my screen again. So what is school readiness? School readiness is the child's ability to demonstrate foundational knowledge. So that's just basic knowledge and skills and behaviors in all learning domains. So the learning domains are language, literacy, mathematics, science, social studies, physical well-being, emotional well-being, as well as eye-hand coordination and just gross motor skills and just being prepared for school. School readiness is a partnership. It's a partnership between families, the community, 
and the school system and the children. So all of these puzzle pieces fit together, make ready children and ready families. There has been extensive research done in the areas of neuroscience, psychology, and economics to show that from birth to five, the brain develops at the most rapid rate and the students and children absorb more information during this period of time than any time in their life. So that is why early childhood, birth to five, are the most important times for children to learn language, literacy, mathematics, problem solving, social skills, and emotional development. So in early childhood, we focus on the whole child. When I say the whole child, we, we focus on all aspects of their learning and their well-being. When you go and enter a classroom, children are going to learn all of the domains within the day. Math, science, social studies, social skills, peer relations, emotional supports, social foundations, which is just being around others, as well as gross motor and wellness. Is your child ready for school? Here are some tips that you can think about in different areas. So I'm going to look at my second screen a little bit more. For language and literacy, the ability to talk and listen to adults and other children, the ability to understand stories and answer questions about a story. As a parent, by simply talking with your child and having conversations, asking them about how was their day? What did you do today? What did you like? What did you not like about the day? You can read a story to your child. They love seeing the pictures. And as you read, you can move your finger across the page to touch the words, to show them that the words tell the story. You can ask them questions about the character, and then they can identify personal information that relates to them in the story. The ability to identify letters of the alphabet, the capital letters and the lowercase letters, to also identify the sounds of letters. For example, the letter B says B. And then you can also find words in your environment around your home as you're driving in the car that start with certain letters. You might be out driving and see a McDonald's sign. You can point out if they notice any letters. It starts with the letter M or, oh, what sign is that? That's the target sign. Target starts with the letter T. As far as physical well being and motor development, for school readiness, you want to give your child some independence for dressing themselves, practicing buttoning and zipping and tying shoes, which is definitely difficult. The ability to run, jump, play ball, roll a ball, kick a ball, throw a ball, the ability to use scissors, manipulate Play Doh, do some painting, do some writing and some drawing and just some good safety habits, such as washing your hands. In the area of mathematics, we want your child to, to do some counting. So the best thing to start is numbers one through five and then moving on through 10. You might count, you could count objects, or just simply say the numbers. So when I say count objects, I mean that you could find things around your house. You could find pennies or toys or something from the kitchen, either canned goods or setting the table and counting objects. The ability to sort things. So you might find things in a pile and you might sort them by color. If you find a bunch of buttons or maybe you're doing the laundry, your child can sort by, oh, these are shirts, these are socks, these are pants. The ability to solve problems. So just think about different problems and your child's ability to solve. And then you, as a parent, you can support your child in solving those problems. Social foundations, the ability to play with other children, get along and cooperate, play board games, play simple outside games, or just playing on the playground. The ability to follow rules and routines and multi-step directions. And when I talk about multi-step directions, I mean just simple three-step directions. Get a puzzle, play with it, put it away, or at home, some other directions, simple two-step direction. Get dressed, brush your teeth. For young children, simple directions between one and three steps is the best for accomplishing a task. 
So you also want your child to practice with their emotions and staying on task. For young children between the ages of three and four, staying on the task would be around 10 to 15 minutes. Older children, kindergarten age, would be about around 20 to 25 minutes. Love this slide. What can you do as a parent? Read a book with your children. Like I said before, open the pages, show them the pictures, read the words, talk about the story, what happened, who is in the book, where are they? Talk, sing, play with your child, create routines at home and things that you expect them to do. Encourage your children to ask questions and answer questions that you might ask about them. Engage in counting, counting activities and just other reading activities, playing games. Familiarize your child with the world around them. Go for walks, go to the park, go to the playground, maybe even go to story time at the library. Promote play to help develop all of these skills. Find some friends in your neighborhood, maybe join a play group and encourage responsibility. Encourage your child to try to do as much on their own as they can. These are some different toys and objects that help with spatial relations and using eye-hand coordination, cooperation, and just finding math in your everyday life. So blocks and puzzles, board games, card games, coins or different objects around the house to play math games. Next, I would like to share with you different settings. When your child is moving from either being just at home with a family member, a family daycare center, a community daycare center, or even a preschool. It's different than going to a public school. In the beginning, when your child is in a different place, in a, such as a preschool or a daycare or a community center or with a family, you'll see that highlighted in light blue. And then the public school is the dark blue. So you see the opportunity for centers and free choice is more limited. However, there are many opportunities in the kindergarten day for children to have free choice, such as center time or playtime, lunch, the playground, sometimes in special areas, and then when they do some independent work at school. There's the individual time also increases and the higher expectations in the school. They will also have small group, which will increase from just a preschool experience as well as whole group or direct instruction will increase. Getting connected with the school is very important. So the goal is just to foster a, the familiarity and the healthy environment of knowing what the school building is like, knowing who is in the school building and where to go for when you go to school. So you want to increase the comfort level of your child for coming to school. You wanna meet the teacher maybe go to a back to school night or a sneak and peek. If the school offers some type of play group or a playground, playground visitation prior to the beginning of the year, try to join those opportunities. Maybe you'll even meet some children in your neighborhood. I know this is very hard to see, so I'm going to do my best to share it with you so you can see the words. Arrival is the beginning of the kindergarten day. It is approximately 30 minutes. It's when your child either arrives from the car, walking to school, or coming off the bus. Some activities would include unpacking their backpack, getting breakfast, picking a center for the day, or doing some type of individual work to get ready for the day. Opening is a time when students get the opportunity to share what they've been doing at home or just something that is on their mind. The teacher and the students will read the board plans, say the pledge, do some calendar and mathematics activities. Language arts. This is a long block. You will notice that it's around 120 to 130 minutes. It seems like a really long time, but I want to ensure you that language arts is broken into separate parts. Students will have a read aloud, they will experience literature, they will experience book and print concepts, comprehension concepts from reading a story, the opportunity for writing, and word work. And word work is learning letters and words, 
and letter sounds, and then build, building words and high frequency words such as sight words. Next, we have lunch. All children will participate in lunch and they will have the opportunity to go to the cafeteria. Outdoor movement or indoor movement is approximately 20 minutes. Mathematics is a 40 minute block where students will engage in counting, number relationships, operations and algebraic thinking, measurement, data, and geometry. Learning centers is an opportunity for your child to play and socialize. They also learn many, many skills during play. The typical learning centers in the classroom would be the block center, housekeeping, puzzles and games, science, math, the sensory table, the art center, as well as Play-Doh and painting. Excuse me, I missed rest. Rest is another portion of the day where students will have an opportunity to relax. They don't necessarily have to sleep, but it is built into the kindergarten day. Oh my goodness, it jumped. Tub is a time where students will participate in thematic unit block. So tub refers to thematic unit block. This is a time for science and social studies learning and for students to investigate and explore and work on projects. So what are some things that you have questions about? Students also participate in special areas. They will go to the library, the art room, physical education and music. Next, I would like to share with you the building blocks for language and literacy. First, we start with phonological awareness, with, which is reproducing visual and auditory sounds, rhymes, and chants. Then we move on to phonemic awareness, which is hearing and counting the phonemes and different sounds in words and letters. Phonics, we move on to by associating a specific sound with a letter. And then children move on to CVC words. A CVC word is a word that has a consonant, a vowel, and a consonant. For instance, dog or cat, they are CVC words. Then you will move on to initial sounds, final sounds, and blends. For mathematics, we focus on the mathematical standards of practice for persevering, conducting reasoning, constructing viable arguments, modeling with mathematics, which is simply using tools or hands-on materials, using tools strategically, attending to precision, looking for use and structure, problem solving, and responding to reasoning. The next slide shares the green is our critical content for mathematics. You see everything that has to do with numbers highlighted in green. So for kindergarten, counting and cardinality is the most important aspect that children can build a foundation on. So when we talk about a number, for example, number three, we want to know what it looks like. And if you count to three, one, two, three, what number comes after it? One, two, three, four, five and continue on. We also want to know if you had to put numbers in order, what that would look like, or if you were going to make a group of three or something. So students would count objects. One, two, three. The next is my favorite slide. This is a slide of a kindergarten classroom. This slide is extremely old, but it's well worth its purpose. In the door, you will see an administrator and maybe a parent. And these people are wondering, what is the teacher doing? What are the children doing? They're just playing, they're not learning. But as you can see, and I will read a few descriptions, through playing, children learn so, so much. If you ever have an opportunity at home, just listen to them talk and listen as they're playing. Think to yourself, what are they learning as they're playing a board game? What are they learning as they're riding a bike? 
So for instance, we have the, the children at the table. I'm developing mobility of thought. I'm practicing cooperation. Here down at the blocks, I'm following a mental plan and I'm problem solving. Down in the front, oops, it jumped on me, I'm sorry. Down on the front, I'm developing good self-concept and I'm developing number concepts. I'm learning to take turns and gross motor skills. Organizing thoughts and planning and eye-hand coordination. So through play, children evolve and they learn multiple, multiple concepts. Next, I would like to share with you Harford County Public Schools website. So if you click www.hcps.org and you scroll to the parent tab. So just double, double click the parent tab. Here you will find early childhood resources and other school related resources. You can find applications for pre-kindergarten. You can find frequently asked questions and answers. You can find information on kindergarten registration, a video of what pre-K looks like, information of all of our programs. This is just a picture of our frequently asked questions. In the table of context, you can click and it will link you to the content that you wish to view and receive answers on. Also on the Harford County Public Schools website, there is an early childhood page. On this page, there, there are several resources for family and community resources, school resources for education, as well as mental and physical health resources. This video recording will be on this homepage, as well as other parent workshop recordings that will support you and your child in your early childhood experiences. Ready at Five is a wonderful website for you to look at to gain information for early childhood and different experiences and expectations for your young child. So you would go to www dot ready at five dot org. Don't forget registration for Harford County Public Schools opens the first Friday of May of every year. You may simply go online and look at the registration information and complete the registration or you may call or go to your local elementary school for more information. I thank you for listening today and joining me for our early childhood school readiness workshop today. Again, my name is Kathy Griffin. My telephone number is 410-588-5252. Also, my email is available at kathy.griffin at hcps.org. I really enjoyed providing you information today, and I hope that you have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining me.